Maybe it's just to break the ice. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Which is a greeting of peace. Peace be unto you. And this is a greeting of all the messengers of God. This is something that started from the beginning, from the first man, Adam, to Moses, to Noah, to Jesus, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. They taught us to wish that greeting of peace, and that's what we're starting with. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. What was your name again? Najwan Baron. Tell us a little about yourself. Well, I'm an American Muslim. I'm 11 years old. I go to Al-Azhar school in Tamarack. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. So tell us, now you're how old? I'm 11 years old. And you said you're an American Muslim? Yes. What does that mean to you to be an American Muslim? Well, I'm very proud to be an American Muslim. It means a lot to me. To, in the essay, um, usually when you're doing a report, you go into books and the internet, but during this essay, when you have to talk about what it means to you, I just looked into my art. I didn't look in a book or anything. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, come salam. Okay, tell us uh, about yourself. I'm 13 years old. I go to Salat Tawfiq in um, Fort Lauderdale, and um, I'm in eighth grade. American Muslim. Huh? You, you're born in America? Yes. <laughs> do, do you worship a moon god? What? Do you worship a moon god? A moon god? Uh, no. No? Who, who is Allah? Allah is the creator of the universe. <laughs> okay, good. Mashallah. How do you feel being an American Muslim? I feel proud. Tell us, do you know anything about Jesus? Yes. Do you, wh wh what do you know about Jesus? Jesus is Prophet Isa, and he's a prophet of Allah. He came to spread the message of Islam. But over time, people changed the real message and translated it into in English, but they didn't translate it correctly. Do you love Jesus? Yes. We do love Jesus as a mighty messenger of God. That's beautiful, see? Because some people might think Muslims are the antichrist. They don't like Jesus. They don't like, you know, our way of life. Congratulations. MashaAllah, you guys are a good rep representation of American Muslims doing good. Keep up the good work. Alhamdulillah. It's not the spin factor. It's just the, right. inshallah, the Dean show here. So before we have you on the podium addressing the audience, I want to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. Tell us now, how did you, you, you shared a, 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 a beginning with me, how you started, it was really interesting. Could you share this, how you got started with this whole organization? Sure, in 2008, there was a DVD that was distributed, um, it was called Obsession. And uh, I was at work, I remember where I was, and I, I got the DVD, and you know, radical uh, Islam, some, something radical Islam war against the West or something like that. So I saw it, I took it home and I watched it, and it really, it hit me. And uh, I realized then that this is the path that you know, I need to take, because um, when I see Muslims being attacked, when I see these hard things, it hurts. So uh, at that moment is when I turn my life, um, inshallah, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, make a difference for the community, inshallah. Tell us, how do you feel? I know myself, just like yourself, when I started to see these, these things, yeah. the misrepresentation out there, and I started to study, and what I was studying, I was like, this is not Islam, this is not my way of life, this is not my religion, and I got to sit with some of the most prominent scholars here in America and overseas, and they came on the Dean Show, and they condemned such actions as 9-11, shoe bomber, bomber, underwear bomber, all these different bombers and whatnot, you know, totally condemned it, said this is not a part of Islam, consensus of of the Muslim scholars, 99.9%. .9 
And now you hear people such as this uh, Alan. West has not fully explained his position. The Council on American Islamic Relations says it received a one word response from West after asking him to disassociate himself with people it considers anti Islamic. When, when you hear someone like him come on, we have over here the consensus of scholars saying one thing 99.9% .9 telling us what Islam is, telling us how we should live it, and all the good that it promotes. But then you hear someone like this coming on. Muhammad enacted the Hijra, and he left Mecca and he went out to Medina. And stepping up like he's a scholar, stepping up and telling us what our religion is teaching us. How does that make you feel? The, 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 as I said in the video earlier, the, the majority of, of the problem right now um, is people really don't understand Islam. For, for us Muslims, you know, we're dealing with Muslims every day. So uh, it's normal for us, but the majority of Americans don't know any Muslims. So individuals like Alan West um, are very dangerous because they project themselves as self-proclaimed scholars. Um, and people listen to them and they understand them. So this, this is dangerous for our community. Um, you know, we're a very small community, uh, but we have power. Um, so, you know, this is uh, a problem and this is something that, you know, we're pushing back, that CARE pushes back. Um, all the time, and that's our job. So, that's your question. We as Muslims, ones who have submitted to the one creator, the same God that Jesus worshipped, the same God that Moses, Abraham, all the messengers of God, they taught the same way of life. Submit your entire self to the one who created you. That's what a Muslim is. So, we as Muslims, we follow Islam, submission to the one God. Now, tell us, tell us please, you know, before you get up, I'm, I'm just itching. I have so, ma so many questions. The, the other one that, that, that comes to my mind have you had a chance to reach out to him, to invite him for some pizza, some biryani, maybe soften his heart? Because all of the n not yet Muslims, there are brothers in humanity. There yeah. are brothers in humanity. Is it true? Absolutely. Have you had a chance to, and would you be willing to sit with the man, talk with the man one-on-one, -on -one, the teddy bear that you are? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people think uh, that I haven't tried to engage Alan West. Um, and I've tried professionally, with respectfully, to engage him without the media being involved. And uh, just to have that conversation to un explain to him the larger context of the verses that he takes out of the Quran and does his little sound bites. So I, I have tried uh, to engage with him. Um, however, he's, uh, you know, held suit and uh, completely streamlined. However, uh, I got some good news, brother, uh, where's Dr. Uh, uh, Bassam? There he is over there. Um, he, he just attended a uh, event in Boca Raton. It was an interfaith event, and uh, Professor Al Halabi uh, had some success. So, inshallah, you know, I'm going to make dua that Brother Bassam can get through to this individual um, and uh, explain uh, what Islam is. And hopefully, these childish things can stop. Yeah. Uh, just, just a couple more, please. Yeah. You got a little emotional. Yeah. In one of the videos, something was penetrating the heart. What happened? It was the kids when uh, <laughs> when when uh, when I see kids. You did that on purpose. <laughs> when I see kids being attacked um, and and there's issue with kids, it it really hurts. And you know they're defenseless. So don't do that again. <laughs> Um, no, so this is from the heart. People need to see no, this. Yeah. Is, this is, I mean, we're human beings. We hurt. We shed tears. Yeah. People don't understand that. So they need to understand that before you utter something that's hurtful, that can really put someone down, don't kick a man when he's down. Help him up. And this is what we're about. So, inshallah, God willing, when the world sees it, they can see, like, those are human beings. They bleed like we bleed. They cry like we cry. Let's not hurt these people. Let's work together. We got to be in this world together. It's already tough as it is. So let's not hurt my, our brothers in humanity. So I, I really want the people to, to, to feel this. This is not something fake. Yeah, no, it is. Um, it uh, that, that video when I was addressing the school board because we got quite a few complaints, uh, you know, regarding Muslim children and, and uh, you know, s even educators, teachers harassing the Muslim students. Um, so that, you know, that hurt and it, it took me back a little bit. So that's why I got a little emotional. 
Um, uh, so, you know, that, that's what happened. Okay, two more. I'm sorry. I know we're yeah. coming in short, yeah. but yeah. okay, you'll keep it short. But see, that's why you got to come on the show. I have so much to ask you. <laughs> yeah. uh, Osama, Obama, Al Qaeda, Hamas, all these other things, they try to throw some dirt at you, make it stick, hoping that if they throw enough, something will stick and they'll mess up your white suit. So when you hear these things, what do you got to do? Are you, you know, are you promoting some radical Islam or what do you have to do with uh, Al Qaeda, uh, Hamas? I like Hamas. Yeah. I don't have nothing to do with Hamas. I don't know. What, yeah. what, 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 what do you say when they, do you have any affiliation with, with uh, Al Qaeda or what's the other, uh, Osama or Obama yeah. or? We, we have to understand that the Muslim community in the United States is being uh, politically attacked. Our civil liberties are being attacked. Um, and CARE is the largest, most effective organization in the country. So anyone that uh, has any common sense that wants to hurt the Muslim community, they're gonna attack the head. They're gonna attack the biggest one. Um, and that's why CARE gets a lot of this propaganda. Propaganda is not new, it was back, uh, centuries and centuries and centuries, you know, even in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, even the prophets before him. Um, so uh, that's all baseless garbage. I don't even waste my time with that. Uh, but understand that that's what it is. People are attacking. They see care. They see the power. They see the, the strength when we fight for the community's civil rights. Um, and uh, they can't take it. They can't stand it. So they want to they get at care. So that's what that's all about. So this is phony baloney. Uh, propaganda. Absolutely. Propaganda. Okay, yeah. one last one. If he did accept, we hope, we pray to the creator of the heavens and earth that the Alan Wesley, Wes, he can come and sit, he accepts the invitation. Would you be having biryani or pizza? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an Indy Packy food lover, so, uh, you know, it's going to be... Would you let him pick? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll okay, so Alan West, about, yeah. you get this. Come sit with the Muslim, have biryani with the Muslims, or pizza or hamburgers. Your door is open. The masjid is open. Absolutely. Come sit with the Muslims, talk to the Muslims, learn from the Muslims. Allah, there's only one God. Well, often say to me, why did you become a Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Allah. Tupac is a guy, he's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. Thank you very much for joining us here. Thanks for having me. Inshallah, we can have you too in the fe f uh, future. You're also from Chicago? I am from Chicago. I have a few things to say about Chicago vis a vis this audience. Talk, talk to us. Tell us about Chicago. Well, you know. We're, we're very proud of our community in Chicago, and we're very proud of our CARE organization in Chicago, and you know Ahmed yourself. And in fact, we're, we border arrogance when it comes to how proud we are, and I'm going to have to tell him that he has an up-and-coming rival in the Miami Muslim community. This is an impressive community. I'm very impressed with this dinner, and uh, things things are moving along in this community, alhamdulillah. It's very impressive, and it's the work of Nizar. And when Nizar is talking about the problems uh, that the Muslim community faces, we have to keep in mind, if your roof has a leak in it, you're going to fix it. If your car has a problem, you're going to fix it. If your community has a problem, you need to fix it. We cannot excuse ourselves by saying, that's not my roof. We cannot excuse ourselves by saying, that's not my car. If you assume for a moment that, well, the federal agents are calling somebody else's children, they're calling them at the same mosque that your children attend. If you think to yourself for a moment that the problems plaguing some people are plaguing only immigrants or plaguing somebody from some community or other, we have to remember Muslims live only under one roof. So when Nizad is talking about these things, when he's talking about hiring a lawyer, for example, this is a real thing. So tell us, our dear beloved brother, just for those, many of us know who you are, just for some of the people who don't know, tell us just in a couple sentences a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a professor at DePaul University in religious studies with a focus on Islamic studies. I was born in Baghdad, Iraq, and uh, like many of you, came here to the United States with my family. And I have a daughter who's nine years old. And I've seen my daughter go the same things that I went through when I was a kid during the first Gulf War. Went through the first Gulf War, 
then we go through 9-11, then we go through the second Gulf War, and yet she's still being plagued by the same things at school that I'm being plagued, that I was plagued by as a young man growing up in the United States. So th things haven't changed, and in many ways things have gotten worse, I agree. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why care is so important to me. Tell us now, you saw the video? Yes. And you see some of this, this hate rhetoric. How, how does that affect you? How, does, how do you feel when you see this stuff? Well, it's not about how it affects me personally. It's about how it affects our country. We, this rhetoric uh, is not merely a rhetoric of hate. It's a rhetoric to displace productive energies and to uh, distract everyone from what's really going on. And when, when I speak here in a minute, we, I'll address some of these things. Over the last 10 years, our economy has floundered. We've wasted billions and billions of dollars on wars that we never needed to fight. Those billions enriched a few CEOs at a few companies. And everybody didn't notice what was going on because they were so busy focused on hating your beard or hating your name or hating the way you pray, which of course is ridiculous, particularly in a country where religious freedom is, is paramount. You think there's some of this stuff going, look, look over there. What's? You see, I took the money. You think some of this stuff yeah. is going? Hey, Absol well, distraction. You yeah, get, absolutely. You, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You think you know. some of this stuff is going? Hey, look over there, and you look, and then you know, your hands there's, in the pocket. The, yeah, you think some of these things are just distractions from the bigger events, focusing on this, you know, hocus pocus stuff with the Muslims, and then distracting people from the bigger issues, the human beings from bigger issues. Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So w give us some advice. What, what do you feel now, you know, um, living in this country? What could we do as productive, law-abiding citizens to help make a change? We need to remain positive, and most importantly, we need to be organized. And being organized means we do not expend energy arguing with one another. We don't expend energy looking for the negative in each other. The Muslim community cannot afford it. This community is under assault. It's been under assault for at least 10 years, and I would argue possibly 30 or 40 years. And we have to set aside our differences, whatever those differences may be. Those are differences we can talk out amongst each other. But when it comes to public speaking, when it comes to issues facing the community, when it comes to what position we take as a community, we have to remain united. It's not a luxury that we can afford to be disunited and to consider our own personal beliefs, or our own personal agendas. Uh, by so doing, we're only limiting what we can accomplish. There's no record in history that shows people forced by sword point to convert to Islam. When Islam spread through countries, they would set up private churches and synagogues for the non-Muslims they were governing, and because of the good treatment they had received, they themselves would convert. If one considers the small number of Muslims who initially spread Islam to the west, all the way from Spain and Morocco into the east from India and China, one would realize that such a small group of people could not force others to be members of a religion against their will. It is also interesting to note that that when the Mongols invaded and conquered large portions of the Islamic Empire, instead of destroying the religion, they adopted it. One, Islamic terrorism. Misconception, Muslims are terrorists. This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody it is quickly regarded as terrorism? Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However. All over the world, people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include, Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits, for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so, do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, If they seek peace, then you seek peace which means do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people.
please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.